This is how my firm does bookkeeping for an Etsy store in QuickBooks using our trusty Etsy fee calculator. Before we start, there are two principles to understand that will help you with the bookkeeping. The first is that Etsy should be treated like a bank. This is because when you make a sale in Etsy, money is received into your Etsy account before it is transferred into the bank. Etsy acts as a bank to hold your money before it is transferred into your actual bank account. The second principle is that you need to look at the Etsy uh, calculator from the perspective of your Etsy account. What I mean is that in the summary section of the calculator, you will notice positive and negative numbers. If we look at the calculator from the perspective of your Etsy account, money received into Etsy will be a positive number and money leaving your Etsy account will be negative number. So things like sales from Etsy, money coming into your Etsy account will be positive and Etsy fees, money leaving your Etsy account to pay Etsy will be negative. Understanding this will help you understand how your Etsy account operates and how the calculator works. Still with me? Great. We start off the bookkeeping by downloading the Etsy fee calculator. The calculator will have the accounts we will need to create in our accounting software. This can be found on our website and I'll leave a link in the description to download. Each year of the calculator corresponds to the year you are doing bookkeeping for. So if you are doing 2024 bookkeeping, download the 2024 Etsy fee calculator. Once you get the calculator, open the breakdown tab and look at the summary. We will create accounts using the heading on the summary table. But before we do, let's see what these headings mean. The gross sales include the sum of sales you make on Etsy, less discounts and refunds. The fees column is the fees Etsy charges for listing, transactions, and marketing. The payments are transfers from your bank account to your Etsy account. This only happens if you don't have enough funds in your Etsy account to pay for the fees or refunds. The deposit account are transfers from your Etsy account into your bank account. The payment service fees are fees Etsy charges for sales paid via credit or debit accounts. The shipping label fees are for those that use shipping labels on their Etsy accounts. Other fees are any fees that may not show up in any of the other columns. Etsy taxes may be open for interpretation depending on where your store is located. From my experience, however, these are purchase taxes that Etsy charges on all their fees. This amount is based on the province or state you live in. This amount could also be Etsy fees depending on your Etsy account settings and where your store is located. Still following? Awesome. Let's now create these accounts in QuickBooks. Since the sales account will most likely come with your accounting software, we will only create the following accounts, Etsy fees, payment services fees, shipping label fees, and Etsy clearing account, which is basically a bank for Etsy. We do not have to create an account for payments, deposits, as these are related to the Etsy clearing account. We also do not have to create an account for Etsy taxes, as you will need to do so using the accounting software's tax module. For QuickBooks users, this will mean turning on the taxes module and creating the appropriate tax accounts based on your province or state. In your accounting software, the gross sales account will be an income account. All the fees will be created as expenses and the Etsy clearing account will be created as a bank account. Once all the accounts are created, we are ready to start the bookkeeping. There are two things we will need from Etsy to do the bookkeeping. The first is the Etsy CSV for the month or months we are doing the bookkeeping for. The other is the ending balance on our Etsy account for each month we are doing the bookkeeping for. I will show you how to find each. First, let's download the Etsy CSV from your Etsy account. First, go to your Etsy store manager, click finances, then payment account. Scroll all the way down and click see all monthly statements. Pick the month you want and scroll down till you see generate new CSV. Click that or you can click CSV if the CSV already generated. Now look for the ending balance on your Etsy account for each month. In the same place you downloaded the CSV, scroll down just a bit until you see all the activities for the month you downloaded a CSV for. The amount under the balance column under the first line you see or last date of the month is your ending balance. Jot down the ending balance for each month somewhere you can remember or come back to it. We will reference this when doing our reconciliation. Now let's use the Etsy fee calculator to start the bookkeeping. Open your Etsy fee calculator and open the Etsy CSV for the month you want to calculate. Here, highlight and copy the contents of your Etsy CSV. 
do not highlight the header. Now paste it into the drop tab of the Etsy calculator and that's it. Open the breakdown tab to see a breakdown, summary, and graph of your Etsy store, including sales, fees, and more. The summary is what we will focus on. You can add multiple months into the calculator by copying and pasting the contents of other months in a new row like this. Once you're done, we are now ready to enter the sales and fees using the summary of our calculator into our accounting software. In QuickBooks, we are going to use the deposit module to enter the Etsy transactions for each month. We are going to do one deposit entry for each month. Let's start with November. First click new, then click bank, deposits under other. Enter the date and deposit account. In our case, it will be the Etsy clearing account. The customer for each line will be Etsy. Let's enter the gross sales. Remember that this is money coming into our Etsy account, so it will be positive. For now, we enter the sales as out of scope sales. However, if you're in Canada, we take the calculator a step further by extracting all the sale taxes that are associated with each sale and do the entries for you, as you can see here. Visit paperlessbooks.ca for a free consult if you are interested in this service. Let's now enter the fees. This is money going out of your Etsy account, so they will be negative. Here I am entering fees and shipping label fees. Now here comes the tricky part. Rewind, pause, and replay this part as many times as possible to grasp this concept. Etsy taxes can be taxed on fees, but they can also be simply Etsy fees depending on the province or state your business is in. Based on my experience, I have reason to believe that these are almost always taxes on Etsy fees. In order to add the Etsy taxes, we have to convert the Etsy tax amount to the net amount. Simply take the Etsy tax amount and divide it by the percentage you are expected to be charged taxes based on your store address on your Etsy account. For example, this store is in Ontario, so we pay 13% on goods and services as the sales tax. Knowing this, if we take the Etsy tax amount and divide it by 13%, we get our net amount, which is the amount without the tax. Enter the answer as Etsy fees, which is a negative amount. Now add the appropriate sales tax to it. In our case, it will be 13%. In a new line, enter Etsy fees again, then input the net amount you calculated in the previous line as a positive number, this time with out of scope tax. This will leave just the tax value from your calculator in the total, which is what you want. Now, if you don't think these Etsy taxes are taxes and are indeed fees, simply enter it as you would fees without the calculation. In the end, you know you've done the entry correctly when your profit and loss value on the Etsy calculator matches your bank deposit total. You may now save and close this entry. Once you save and close this entry, you can do the payments and deposits. For deposits, head over to the bank transactions section in your QuickBooks. Find the funds deposited into your bank from Etsy and categorize them as a transfer from Etsy clearing. For payments, find the funds take out of your bank by Etsy and categorize them as a transfer to Etsy clearing. Now complete this entire process for the rest of your months. When done, we are now ready to reconcile our Etsy account to make sure we've accounted for all the transactions. This is also a great way to check for mistakes. To reconcile, head over to the reconcile module in QuickBooks and select Etsy clearing as the account to reconcile. Choose the last day of the month you're reconciling as the end date. Now remember those ending balances I told you to write down. Add that for the end balance for that particular month. If you did the entries correctly, you should have no problem reconciling the Etsy account. And that's how you enter Etsy transactions into QuickBooks using our Etsy fee calculator. If you are an Etsy business or a small business in Canada, looking for bookkeeping services, visit paperlessbooks.ca. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like this, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.